Welcome to Z Reviews 2023, where everything is teeny fucking tiny. Put those down. Um, lots of things happening. We're gonna pause that. We're gonna pause this. So, um, I took it upon myself in this year to combine a few reviews because these all have something very much in common. And besides the fact that this color matches that background, she's looking at him. Oh, they're so fucking cute. This is the year of small, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Things are getting bigger and more expensive, and then they're getting smaller and cheaper. So the three items we have here, SMSL C100, Senpai Yoshida, Topping DX1, Senpai Apos, and IFI sent me their little Uno. With little tiny little just... All right, so have to test these a little bit differently. These two are directly competing with each other. And this is just a DAC, a little remote control DAC for $120. They're all cheap too, 120, 180, as of the filming of this. I actually have a special bag with small Anime Girl stickers instead of the big ones, small ones, for just, just this type of occasion. Um, I guess we'll move from left to right, time codes if you wanna skip. Thank you for everyone who clicks the sponsorship link. I don't know who's paying for it yet, maybe nobody. Who the hell knows? Maybe I'll put some interesting YouTube videos in there when it's not being sponsored, just so people click it constantly. It'll be like a peace secret link on the unboxing channel. Um, the C100 here is the smallest remote control dr droll DAC in existence. Because, I mean, the only one I can think of is the topping E30? L30 is the DM. E30 is the DAC. Even though it should be a D30 for DAC, this is a C. Um, like here's a remote and it's bigger than the unit and it's very basic. It's just USB, either signal or power in. I'm just using it for power right now. It's going to a plug over there. So like use a coaxial digital in and then it has a fiber optic in <coughs> like comes out of your TV, <coughs> like comes out of your TV. If you wanted to have a TV in your living room and you wanted to plug a little, little tiny little DAC, a little remote control into your living room. On your into your TV and just give a stereo left and right with a, with the remote control for volume control on your brand new Cali IN fives. Links in the description. All right, soundbars suck. Don't buy them. Um, so yeah, this gives you Bluetooth and USB input and fiber optic input and coaxial digital input and two RCA outputs. And a little tiny thing. And you can see they did an interesting thing here. This looks like it was designed to just be a screen at some point. And they're like, ah, fuck. We need a way to control it. We don't want to drill any more holes. So now it's an insert into a square that's of a different texture. This is all plastic. It says MQA, easily removable with sandpaper. Just get a little, it's the smallest MQA logo I've ever seen. And you've got, I guess that one's the infrared receiver. And then there's a little uh, a blinky light that'll probably come on. You have MQA, which you never, MQ, honestly, MQA, raise your hand. Get out. This is a touch button for switching between inputs, coaxial, Bluetooth, USB, optical, that's it. You can't raise and lower the volume on this without the remote. The remote control is the standard RC8C, which gives you power, up and down, which does it also? Yeah, it gives you up and down. You literally have two choices for volume. You could either use the rocker on the bottom or the up and down on top. I love that. This way, if you're drunk and it's upside down, you can still probably figure it out. Uh, left and right do nothing by default, and, and then you have your input select here. Uh, function shuts off the screen. Again, like for your living room when it's in your little cabinet and you're watching a fucking amazing movie on your Cali IN5s or Cali IN8s, both. See, I'll link both in the description. With your RCA cables going to it, your fiber optic going down, and you're fucking done. Um, and then you can just hit the function button and shut the screen off so it doesn't like have that little, little white light there. You could also go into a menu, but we'll get to that in a second. Mute which makes things flash zero. It's just gonna flash zero because it's muted, unmute and up and down. You hit the button in the middle here. It tells you coaxial, you hit it again, FL for filters. So you can go up and down between six different filters. I don't personally hear difference in filters. If you do, please let me know. Hit it again, BL for, for backlight. It defaults to one, which is like a nice, it's nice. And it goes up to eight, which is like, and every, every level is brighter and brighter and brighter until it gets to like blisteringly bright. And then it goes back to volume and you're done. This unit is done, I've reviewed it. I could review it. I actually probably should talk about how it sounds. So I'm outputting from this into the topping LA90 
and I'm running uh, T60 Argons on it, and I was playing Man From U.N.C.L.E. soundtrack, Bugs Beats Something Else. And while this is, unit is not really designed to have RCA inputs, it has the uh, quarter inch adapters in the back, we're still getting, yeah, this is fine. Like, it's not going to be the great. It's not an R2R -R DAC, but I haven't noticed any audible flaws in it. It throws the low end. Like, it's also throws the low end. There's decent stuff. Soundstage. Like, none of that stuff really is going to transform metaphysically because you're using a $100 DAC or $120 DAC. But, I mean, I could absolutely... If you said sell these headphones using this amp and this, this headphone, what DAC do you want? That's BEB Tech Master. That's doing that. Um, this would be fine. It'd be fine. It's not adding anything to the sound. It's not taking anything away. It doesn't have those SMSL sound modes like the, like the higher end DACs use. But for fuck's sake, man, it's $120. And it's the smallest little fucking thing. It has every input you could possibly want from any normal DAC. Get it. Thumbs up. Um, next, we're going to get to the stuff that's a little bit more particular. Because I whipped this out. This is the closest I have. I don't think I have it here anymore. I want to sold it. Um, this looks like the original Audio Engine D1. It's This is the B1. This is a Bluetooth receiver. But back in the day, and I mean when I first moved to the apartment in, in Philly, this was, the, this was it. It was like you had the FIO E10. I don't even think it was the K. And then you had like the Audio Engine. And it was just RCA outs, USB in, full-size USB in, RCA outs, had a volume knob, and it had a quarter inch headphone out, and I think a power button. And that was it. And it was the smallest, it was literally this size unit. And it was like epic because it was so small and because it was so good. And only occasionally did that audio engine freak out and just play loud static every like 23 days. It was a feature back in the day. So I pulled this out because this is the size that was. And now here we are with the topping DX1 which is roughly that size, and guess what? Exact same layout. Full-size USB, which is going into said laptop here. We're gonna have to switch over to this. Come on. Yeah, you good. No, I'm not doing Wasapi push. I wanna do Wasapi event. Wasapi event. There we go. Yeah, clicky click, 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 click. Full-size USB. High low gain, which the audio engine back in 2015 didn't have. Um, I'm leaving it on high because we are running Tim Sock $2,000 high end planars on it. Um, we have left and right audio outputs, which, if you wanted me to do this, it would not be out of the realm of possibility to do this now. So the volume control in the front is specifically for the quarter inch and 3.5 millimeter. I wish it was a 4.4, even if it wasn't balanced internally. I've come to terms with this. I, I keep buying IMs and getting IM cables and cables and other cables that are 4.4. And even if the unit's too cheap, which $100 is a fucking affordable, to make it actually balanced, give me the 4.4. The just write on it not balanced, just 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 for the convenience sake. So you, Because, I mean, if you're going to get a quarter inch... Very few headphones have a force quarter inch. Even this acoustic research cable, which looks like it is actually an adapted 3.5. Look at that. Can never separate these two. So I could plug it into this if I felt like it and then still use the uh, Tim Socks on it. So we have to talk a bit. Well, actually, I'm going to give a two second listen to this for a second. Hold on. So this. Father John Misty's playing. Bach is taking forever to start. Yeah, just like the SMSL, it's got... From eight seconds of listening and assessing, which is my job, to assess quickly, quickly, fast, CS. Yeah, now, again, this is a $100 right now just DAC that happens to have an amp. And this is what people are gonna actually be doing with it. They're gonna be plugging their headphones into the front. You can get a little USB. It's powered by the USB. You don't need any other external power. This, if you were running the signal into it, 
from USB, wouldn't need any external power. If you're using it in the TV setup, like I've described to you over and over again, you would need to power it with a little USB plug. But this just goes in. There is no on off. The, sun, the old audio engine, I don't think, had an on off either. It's just on because it uses no power. It's going to sit there as a device in your computer. And this one is just happening to be outputting here full tilt all the time. And then you have the variable front knob, which I would complain that the indicator is so small. So I will. It's so fucking small. And this looks like it's got a button. It's not. It's just a normal knob. You can turn it all the way down. It doesn't click off. We'll get to that in the IFI, which is a thing I don't particularly like. But um, it's just enough volume. I put the high-res audio sticker from the top onto the bottom. I'm just going to take it off now from the bottom and put it um, where it belongs, which is onto the fucking floor. Uh, you got a little power light, a little, little, little logo. It's like half off center printed. There's a little, little white, little white light just saying, Hey, I'm on. Hey, I'm on. I'm, I'm, I'm engaged. And I could tell you on $2,000 Tim socks, which are extremely hard to drive. It powers them adequately. I just smashed the camera. Well, that was interesting. Like it's not, it's not like blowing my mind, but it isn't distorting. I put these on because full, full tilt, high gain. It's topping. It's topping. It's the creators of the A90D and the LA90. It's like they kind of have the formula for very, very clean amplification fucking down. And even if they strip it away and miniaturize until it's fucking adorable, it's still good. It is a good amplification. So the fact that it has a DAC output, it's fantastic. You only get your USB input, which means you're basically going to be doing computers and laptops. You're not going to be bringing this in your home theater, unless your home theater has a home theater PC. This is more what I would go with if you just need RCA outputs, because again, remote controls are nice. And this doesn't allow you to control the back either. Would have been nice if there was a second switch back here that was like high low gain and then one that made this a preamp or a line out. So right now it's line out, fixed line out, that's all it is. Really well built little metal box. I like the little, it doesn't need to have this like shape and space here, but it does. That adds something. There's something boring about just a square box. Like this is just a square box. Actually, this has a little, a little outcrop under the bottom too. Doesn't need to have that. Industrial design, like commercial product design, is like it's difficult to get things just nice. I'm a big fan of like mini disc players because they were getting so creative with the sticks and the like the, the little jog shuttles and stuff. Everything got boring. And as much as boring this looks on top, it's got nice rounded edges here. That little feature, a kind of cool look. It's got the same knob from the um like the bigger topping stuff, the DX line. I just wish the indicator there wasn't just this little tiny little white notch. It might rub off. It's how small that shit is. So yeah, and you got the same output out of the quarter inch of the 3.5. Now, moving over, taking these off for a second, switching this back from the DX1 to the IFI Uno. I'm going to take my jacket off because it's eight degrees in this basement, but Lord, you wouldn't be able to tell if you were down here. I'm sweating. It's all that hot, hot knowledge flowing out of me. The smallest of the three units, the smallest thing, I would like to say the smallest thing IFI has made, but IFI is actually pretty comfortable in this tiny, teeny, tiny world. I mean, look at the Go Blue. Go Blue is minuscule and you can plug it in USB and basically use it for the same thing you could use this for, just saying link the Go Blue Zeos. But they've made like... The, the little micros, they always make metal boxes that are just small. And they're like, this is a portable for your phone. And I'm like, fucking no, it ain't. So I don't think they're actually attempting to do that with this. This is a little plastic, just it's this. Only it's IFI doing it. So we got a couple more options. We're going to have to swap this yet again. Cats are mewing in the background. Can I get this over this? There we go. Move that over again. So the back of this unit has USB-C, which is power and signal. This is actually the USB cable it came with. This is not the USB cable that this came with, by the way. This cable is really just in a box, all janked. And I'm like, fuck it, using a nice straight blue one. Um, but this is the one that came with the IFI. It was looped. It's not bad. It'll straighten out. All you got in the back is USB-C out or USB-C in. You got the high-res audio sticker in the back. 
I don't feel like I even need to peel that one off. No anime sticker because it's nice textured plastic. And then you get your RCA outputs. Let's see now if those were here. I'm going to play music. I'm going to play music. Hold on. This is a pre-out. So now we have a, tr now there's at least a denomination between these two that has nothing to do with sound, it has a feature set. I hope that water right here pouring is from my washing machine and not a pipe exploding. We'll, we'll find out together. So now this, If I crank this all the way to maximum, now I'm listening to the DAC in this. Which is unaffected by the equalization settings you have on this unit. This unit's party piece is that, unlike this, which is a very dead straight, it does thing. This has buttons, oh my God. You have an EQ button and a power match button. Now the power match is basically high low gain. It defaults to low gain, the little little light's off when you turn it on, the light comes on, and that only affects the, actually, I think that only affects that, hold on a second, what am I listening to? Yeah, that only affects the headphone out. You get a little volume knob, which is actually really kinda hard to turn, especially if you're trying to leave this on a table, it's, it's not the worst. I just wish it was sticking out a little bit, they went for like looks, it looks correct. But this sticks out like a solid more. So this is a much easier knob to control and fiddle with if you're dicking around with a small thing. This also weighs a lot more considering it's made of metal and this is made of plastic. And because of that, they've actually put like heavy silicone feet that I had to peel off protectors. And you can just see it's covered in, it's been on my desk for like no shit, 30 minutes with those peeled off. And it's just covered in hairs and little dandruff pieces to try to get it to stick to the desk. And even these RCA cables are not heavy enough to hold it down. So if you're looking for lightweight portability, the IFI is your boy. So now, unlike this, it has straight line outs and that's it. The volume control actually does affect the output of the back, which means if you're looking for an all-in-one for your desk and you're looking for something to plug speakers into, like Cali IN5s, I wish Cali was sponsoring this video so I could say that, but I just love them so much. You could just buy this, plop it down for $80, plug your headphones in, and then unplug your headphones, control your speakers, and then unplug your headphones back in and control your headphones. I don't believe it'll cut off. Here, let's find out. Uh, by the way, I was trying to remember the name of these. I was like, you know, those headphones, the ones that are good for gaming, the ones that have been up in my office for like a year. These are the Ovidius TX901 Combat Armor. Linked in the description and they're murderous plane arms. Well, let's see if I plug this in if anything stops. Nope, which means you're gonna have to unplug it. I mean, we're just at that point now, we're just slightly inconvenient things. Nothing is perfect. Nothing, except for anime wife who's there perfect. So now, there is a slight delay on the volume knob. When you turn it, it's like, uh, it, just, it comes up like a half second later. Which is good. It means they're not using a just potentiometer that can get all dirty and, and, and nasty and like, oh, it's crackly and it's offset. The fact that it delays it means it's a digital, it's a potentiometer, but it's being read digitally and then the volume is being controlled digitally. Because you'll never have channel imbalance, hopefully. Now, what else they're doing in here? So power match is high-low gain. If I hit that button, it's low gain. I can max this out and it's still very loud. Oh my God. And then you hit that and it's even more loud, so little fucking powerhouse. The EQ is what we have to talk about because the EQ is indicated by three lights on top, blue, blue, and blue. But one lights up the picture of a game controller, that's the gaming preset. One, a picture of a YouTube play button, so that's videos, and one that picture, it's a picture of a music note, which means music. Let me tell you what those actually fucking mean because I was gonna start looking for it and I just said, fuck it, I'll listen. Treble, mid-range, bass, the end. Ex extended treble for gaming, makes sense. Extended mid-range for uh, video watching, dialogue, things like that, makes sense. Music, extended bass, turn it off, it's flat, the end. 
They, they just they can't just say that. They got to make it like, oh, no, this is specifically for this and that. It makes sense to me. I'm glad they did it. You could turn it off. We could turn it on. It's not an offensive amount of equalization. I've had a couple things where I've played, and it's been an offensive amount of equalization. John Carpenter's greatest hits. Oh, that's going to make it. If you know what that's from, that's Prince of Darkness. You want to give your child fucking ten night terrors like I used to have, make him watch Prince of Darkness as a small boy. Um, my only negative is that unlike the topping, which commits to it's on all the time because it's so fucking small, why would you ever shut this off? This will actually go click. You can turn the volume knob down until it clicks. And the fact that the volume knob is a little bit hard to grab means you might accidentally, like while you're trying to fiddle with it, make it go, especially with the delay. Because when you turn it up, it delays. When you turn it down, it delays. So you might keep going and then click. Oh, I thought I had to keep going. Small inconvenience. Small. You'll get used to it. I'll get used to it. I'm already used to it. I just It was annoying at the beginning. And the little power indicator. I'm not sure 100% of this changes color with the different uh, qualities of music. If it's like 96K is different. But it is sort of tucked back here behind the... The knob, and for a second when you put it down, like if it's there, you don't see it. You have to have it sort of like away, like under and away, and then you could sort of just, there's the green. Either way, it's an inoffensive way to show a power that is on. And then you have the little white light here. So you get high, low gain, just like this, essentially. This has equalizations, which is treble boost, mid-range boost, and bass boost. You only get a 3.5 millimeter. I was hoping it would be just a 4.4 and then they give you an adapter, but they're not doing that yet. But again, this is like super budget. If you're getting an $80 DAC amp, you're probably using something with a 3.5 millimeter on it. Like Koss, KPH40s, Zeos, link them. They're right over there. I should have brought them here for the review. Could have like the the whole package for like 110 bucks. As you know, if those are on sale, 110 bucks. What'd I do? Oh, that's broken. Hold on. Why are you broken? Oh, because I turned it off and then turned it back on. And that's... It. <sighs> this would never do that to you because you'd never turn it off. This one, having the ability to turn off something like this is fine because what the computer should do, if you have a Windows machine at least, is... Let me see if it's even in the list. Yeah, it is. IFI Zen. What the computer should do is it should default to the previous sound device. So let's say you have speakers or something on another DAC or an output. You turn this on, this takes over. Oh, this disappeared. It goes back to that. So that would be your that would be your benefit of having an on-off switch. I think I like I, I liked it on the God, it's been so long since I talked about the um Mica Origin G2, which was that again, I like the Mica Origin G2's design better because it was a stick with a volume knob on top. Trying to get the volume knobs in front, it's fine fine on this one it's less fine on this one this one doesn't matter but i like a little if it's gonna be this small just fucking put the top give it the, give it a nice give it some knobs on the top i've added knobs to the top but you gotta add some knobs to the top so thought processes all three equally good as far as dax go you don't get to apply the eqs or anything to the rear you don't get to apply the high gains to the rear so it's just they're good enough it's 80 100 120 dollars Anything will work for, for pushing speakers or another amp. Fine. 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 Not audio file like, oh, I need to fucking taste. Oh, the sibilance just to touch my tongue and make my titties hard. It's like, that's not, they're fine. They're 100% fine. They're $100 and fine. Headphone outs. This doesn't count. This one and this one. The thing is, Topping makes amazing big boy amps. And IFI make amazing big boy amps. And, ugh. Ugh. Amazing little boy amps. Here's the IFI Zen can. I literally have it out because I was testing things with it. So this is not much bigger than that. I mean, it is much bigger than that. But this is also like a $200 amp, and it's, it's just purely an amp. There's no DAC involved. So the fact that they can make things this small already, just make it a little bit smaller, a little bit cheaper, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and we don't lose a ton of that IFI quality. Same thing with the topping. These are two brands that I don't think either one of them is going to fuck up. Neither one of them is going to fuck this up. You're just not, they're not going to. They're, they're both too good at what they do. 
And the fact there was, I will say the Zen Air series, which was like the bigger, like that size version, but cheap. That actually disappointed more than this. This thing is fucking solid. Either one of these will work for your for your needs. If you need one with a line out, and you just want to have it output to another thing with the volume control over there, grab it. You need one with pre-out, grab this. You like the fact that it has bass, treble, and mid-range EQ boosts? Fine. And then this, if you're using anything with a remote control. I, none of these are bad. There's, there's not a point in Z reviews where, oh, someone's got to be a winner, Zeos. No. Why does anything have to be a loser? If everything's good, then I'm just here to tell you about the features and post a wallpaper, and you're supposed to make these decisions on your own. I'm here to help you just decide if a feature matters more than the quality of the sound. Because the quality of sound is almost indistinguishable, honestly. This might be, might just on a hint, be a little bit warmer. Because that's IFI's thing. IFI sound is a little warmer. Topping sound is a little bit, little bit more neutral. The, the, the fucking D90, D, A90D, it's like fucking Jesus. It's topping. It's IFI. Pick the team you like. Pick the color you like. Go for it. I actually don't know if this comes in different colors than this. It'd be nice if it did. But yeah, wallpaper in the horde. I actually reversed this. The wallpaper you're going to find in the horde is her looking that way. But I, I spent the time to flip the image. So she's looking down at the thing. It's so cute. They're all so fucking cute. Um, wallpaper of the horde. Links to these. Thank you to the company who sent them out. Thank you to my sponsor for this video, whoever that is. Uh, don't forget, sound demos are now private for patron and subscribe star subscribers. Uh, as always, Patreon and subscribe to support these channels, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, um, which happen from the 1st to the 10th of every month, and I ship around the world for half shipping. And the $10 tier gets you in the private behind-the-scenes Telegram chat, um, where you can talk to me directly. If you have a question specifically, I probably won't see your question in the comments. Maybe I will, but certainly not if that video is three days old. And then I... Do answer directly with the $10 chat. The $5 patrons and stuff have messaged me. It's lost. Assume the Patreon messaging doesn't work because it doesn't work. Um, so if you want to message me there. Also, if you're in the $10 patronage chat, you can uh, join the Lifetime Swap Me channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear forever until the world explodes, I think. I'll try to keep it going until the world explodes. I'm, I'm setting, uh, setting it on my calendar. But anyway, that... These, that's already in the horde, I think, and I'm done, and you're done, and we're done, and I'll see you in two days. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all good stuff. You need one.